Don't you blink, because today we have a very complex continuation of last week with the two topics we ended it on, Coinbase and Ethereum scaling. So how could these two tie in together? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Well, get ready to, because it's time for Chico Crypto. So to figure this all out, we have to go way back in history, back to when Ethereum wasn't even launched. We have to look at the history of Bitcoin scaling and large Bitcoin clubs in 2015. So, to begin, the history of Bitcoin scaling, it starts with something called the Lightning Network, with the first draft published and co-authored by a very important person, Joseph Poon. So has Joseph's creation, Lightning, succeeded for Bitcoin? No, not at all. There are still major known vulnerabilities which Coindesk just covered in October, and Ethereum is being used as a layer 2 for Bitcoin over the Lightning Network. There is over $3.2 billion in Bitcoin moved to Ethereum's layer to this day, while the Lightning Network, which has had the ability to lock up Bitcoin value for a year longer than Ethereum, only has just over 25 million, or not even 1% of the TVL. Lightning Network has been a failure so far, or people wouldn't be moving their Bitcoin to Ethereum at the rate it's moving. And this Lightning Network, when launched in 2018, was hailed as the savior for Bitcoin, giving it the ability to host LAPS, Lightning Apps, Bitcoin's competitor to Ethereum dApps. And since then, there have been more than a few built, but you haven't heard of a single one. And based on the TVL, no one is using them. So Bitcoin, it got pooned. Lightning isn't it. People are looking more towards Ethereum. So I wonder where Poon decided to move after after 2016 and the launch of Turing Complete Smart Contracts, of course, to Ethereum. Poon and Vitalik Buterin, they authored the Plasma white paper together for a scalable autonomous smart contracts, the Plasma framework to scale Ethereum from the bottom up, which is oh so similar to the Lightning Network. Coindesk covered Plasma during its hype in August of 2017 and said, the system connects child blockchains to the main blockchain with something called fraud proofs. It's similar to the Lightning Network, an idea Poon put forth a couple years ago for Bitcoin, in that it's a top layer interacting with the core blockchain below. While the Lightning Network was limited to work strictly for payments, Plasma extends the idea to more complex computations like Ethereum smart contracts. So before we go any deeper, what's the problem with Lightning and what's the problem with Plasma? Well, it all comes down to proof. With Lightning, it's called the hash time lock contract. And what do these do? Well, they require that the receiver of a payment acknowledge receiving the payment prior to a deadline by generating a cryptographic proof of payment or forfeit the ability to claim the payment, returning it to the payer. Basically a proof that there was no fraud. So how does Plasma work? In the white paper, it says this construction is achieved by composing smart contracts on the main blockchain using fraud proofs, whereby state transitions can be enforced on a parent blockchain. Um, We have a lot of experience with this over the past 20 years, and that gives you an incredible scalability. Now, did this work out, Plasma? Well, no, I showed in the video last Thursday that Plasma ended up being a dud, and the main research into it came from from Plasma Group with Jing Lan Wang at the helm and a Misego now OMG network helping along. So Bitcoin it got pooned by the Lightning Network. Ethereum got pooned Jing by Plasma. But now a third try, an optimistic one with optimistic rollups, taking once again ideas from Plasma, the Poon, and led by someone who has already failed, the Jing. Hmm. Now history, my friends, history. Both Jing and Poon came out of nowhere and got deeply ingrained with both Bitcoin and Ethereum like quick. Poon dropped the Bitcoin Lightning Network paper in February of 2015. And as we can see, Jing Lan Wang was the executive director of the MIT Bitcoin Expo in May of 2015. And then both were at Bitcoin scaling conferences and workshops throughout that year. And as we can see, there is Poon and Thaddeus Dreija speaking on the Lightning Network, the two authors. And then there is Jing Lan also speaking. Her topic? Perspectives and challenges on interfacing with China. 
Then suddenly they both transitioned out of Bitcoin to Ethereum at the same time, both becoming deeply involved with core Ethereum members, Joseph Poon and Vitalik co-authored Plasma, and then Jing Lan heads a research group moving the tech forward. But MIT, that school, it becomes very, very important. Cointelegraph wrote an article in January of this year titled, Did Ethereum Silently Give Up on Plasma? And in it, they say, in a reply to Cointelegraph, representatives from Plasma Group, now known as Optimism, who Jinglan heads, noted that there is a multitude of competent teams pushing Plasma out, referring to external organizations such as Matic, MIT's crypto economics lab and plasm. MIT working on plasma too? I wonder if MIT is gung-ho on the lightning network as well. Well, of course it is. There is their media lab fully researching it to this day with Joseph Poon's lightning network paper co-author Taj Dreja and Jing Lan. She wasn't just the executive director of the expos at MIT. As we can see from this five-year-old Reddit post, she was also the lead developer for their Bitcoin club. Now, I really don't understand exactly what is going on, but there has been common denominators with scaling failures throughout crypto's history. Poon and Wang both get deep into Bitcoin community through MIT. Lightning is dropped. And then suddenly they ditch Bitcoin, Poon and Wang, and transition to Ethereum and do the same dang thing, but call it Plasma. And here's a coinkadink, don't you say? August 2017, the Plasma white paper drops. As we know, Joe Poon and Vitalik write it. What happened the month before this paper was dropped? Amisego ran their ICO in July of 2017, raising 25 million, of which TechCrunch covered. And of course, within their article, there is a Misego team, including Jun Hasegawa, in the initial discussions with Joseph Poon and Vitalik Buterin. Thus, Vitalik and Poon both became advisors to the project, but also Jay Kwan, founder of Tendermint. That will become important in a second. What did Jinglang Wang do? Well, we know she headed the Plasma Group research heading into the scaling tech plasma of which Amisego helped fund which of course came from the ICO money in 2017. Now the plasma group it was founded by Jinglan in 2018. What I find oh so interesting is that same year 2018 she did a deep dive AMA with the token daily blog and a question was asked which developments in the blockchain space do you look most forward to? And here's what Jing said. Ooh, I'm excited for CBC Casper to get cranking, and also really looking forward to some dope RS decentralized naming projects to get off the ground. I would love to see a tour with financial incentives, however, whoever implements that. I'm also a fan of Interledger, Xerox, Lightning, and decentralized prediction markets. Augur, you gonna launch soon or nah? So many things she gave away in that paragraph, but the thing we're interested in? She didn't even mention Plasma as a scaling solution she was excited about. And I find that hilarious because she was a fan of something in 2018 over Plasma. She said it in the paragraph. Interledger. Yeah, Interledger, the tech used with Ripple XRP, uh, barf. And in 2018, her true color showed in my opinion. July of 2018, she writes the Plasma Cash blog. Hey, nice research. But then two months later, she went and wrote this article in September of 2018. An illustrated primer on cross-currency swaps and HTLCs. Remember hash lock time contracts from Joseph Poon's Lightning Network? Well, look at the bottom who she frickin' thanks. Evan Schwartz, co-inventor of the Interledger protocol, aka Team the Ripple XRP. And of course, she references the Interledger protocol itself too. Then, just one month later, in October of 2018, Interledger's Evan wrote this blog, Layer 3 is for interoperability, who is thanked at the bottom? Of course, Wang is. So obviously, Jing Lang back then was more bullish on Interledger over Plasma, and there was a major relationship there. Yet, she became the head of the group researching Plasma and moving it forward. Does that make sense? Well, none of this really does. 
or will it? Well, let's just go back to that blog post from Jing Lan on hash time lock contracts. Who else does she think, including saying watch out for their more than in-depth blog post on the topic? Dan Robinson. Dan Robinson, who we can also see worked for Plasma Group as a research and development writer, but he was also part of something else. We can see it there, a research partner at Paradigm. Very, very important. But let's go to his announcement blog post for Paradigm. He says what he's going to work on with them, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Plasma, and Interledger. Hmm, so who's Paradigm? Well, it's the venture arm of two very important individuals, Matthew Huang and Fred Ursum, who is the co-founder of Coinbase and a current board member. First, let's talk about Matt Huang. He is the son of Huang Kifu, a powerful private investor, a retired hedge fund manager, and a former finance academic at none other than MIT. And hedge fund management, what do you do? For Goldman Sachs, the Asia Pacific region. And in the mid 90s, he personally managed assets that totaled more than China's GDP. Now, if you go into his Wikipedia on him, in his research it says, additionally, he has expanded the applicability of auction theory to financial markets. Now, go back to Jing Lan Wang's last Medium post. It was titled, none other than, An Introduction to Auction Theory, Blockchain Edition. She was trying to bring Kifu's auction theory to blockchain. Obviously, Matt, Kifu, and her are closely tied. Well, yeah, because Paradigm has done so some very telling investing. In January of 2019, Plasma Group and Jing Lan got Paradigm to be a part of the $3.5 million initial funding round with optimistic rollups as their goal. Who else has been funded by Paradigm? Those using rollups to scale. Uniswap from their Series A round blog post. They say initial funding was raised by Paradigm and the second round funding included them too, as well as Coinbase type and Dreesen Horowitz. You won't find it online, but Paradigm is also heavily invested in synthetics, those currently in limbo with the optimistic test debt. And Fred's company he co-founded, Coinbase, what are they doing? Well, they are supporting optimistic too. Although there is one single investment from Paradigm, which is oh so interesting. March 15th, 2018, Paradigm led the $9 million raise for Cosmos creator Tendermint. Who is the only chain using Tendermint to scale? Binance Smart Chain, the now EVM compatible chain with nearly half a billion locked up, downright smothering the others. And many of China's blockchain projects are going with Tendermint, including China's own BSN. I'll let you finish the rest of the story on your own. Cheers, I'll see you next time.